Today we're going to be talking about creating film positives for light sensitive emulsion screen printing. How to create the film positives, what they are, and how they work. But one of the first things we should probably talk about is a little bit of the terminology that's going to take place here. So the first one is, is uh, film positive itself. And I like to define film positives as dark media, or low brightness if you must use that term, uh, dark media on a transparent or semi-transparent base. So if you remember one of the principles of light sensitive emulsion, anywhere that light is able to pass through, that emulsion is going to harden up. Anywhere where it is blocked by something like, uh, in this case, the photocopy uh, material, light, the emulsion is going to stay soft. And so when you uh, wash it out with hot water, that's going to create your stencil. So the dark media that you can use, anything to block out light, would include things like ink, paint, pastels, charcoal, Xerox, in some cases you could use markers or pencils, but those aren't as strong. And the transparent bases or semi-transparent bases would include anything like acetate sheets, vellum, tracing paper, or even oiled up photocopy paper. That's a, a term that I like to refer to as the poor man's photolith, and I'm going to be showing you how to create one of those in a different video. Now a transparency itself is specifically photocopied or printed from a printer onto a clear acetate sheet, which is to say transparencies are in fact film positives. There's one other term that I want you to be familiar with, and that is separations. Those are the individual film positives that make up a print. For example, we have some separations right here. A four color design to make a sort of a sushi platter, and those are just broken down into their individual color separations. Sometimes you're given clues, for example, down here in the corner, you see that R, B, G, and K. K frequently means black, so there's the outline work. This would be B, which is frequently blue. R stands for red in this case. And then G for green. Now, of all of the film positives that you can get your hands on, I frequently find that creating designs on the computer and printing out on the um, acetate paper is oftentimes the best method. For one thing, you can get the most sort of uh, detail in some of these items. For example, look at the size here. That's about maybe two and a half inches tall by maybe almost three inches wide. And look at all that detail that we're able to get in there. And you can replicate that detail in your screen prints. These also have the most consistent means of blocking light, which is to say they're applied uniformly to that acetate paper or acetate plastic sheeting, I guess I should say. And then there is, of course, the acetate sheeting itself being absolutely clear. It allows the most light to come through, which means that it hardens up the emulsion very quickly. You don't have to mess around with uh, waiting for things to burn through. Opposed to that would be something like tracing paper. Because this is slightly more opaque, you can still see through it, but it takes the light a little bit longer to burn through that paper and harden up the emulsion. It still works, it's just fine. It's just, it takes a little bit of practice to get you there. So here is a print that you might have seen the other day in my other video, and this is the individual color separations that made that print. We have the black layer, what would be the red layer, the orange layer, and the white in the background. A great example of uh, another reason why the computer process works the best for a lot of people is it enables you to build your screen print ahead of time and play with those layers and organize and figure out how you can handle such tight tolerances in the registration. So other ways that you can create film positives, if you're not using a computer, is just to have acetate sheets, which they sell at places like Dick Blick and locations like that, and just either draw with paint markers. Now I'm going to point out that these are paint markers and not Sharpies. This stuff actually is more of an oil-based ink. It takes a little bit longer to dry, oil-based paint, if you will. 
and uh, it tends to dry a little bit thicker. Now you can also use things like acrylic paint or ink. This was used, uh, this was using screen printing ink, but you'll notice that you have to be very careful because this sort of media will scratch off of that acetate, which can be used to your advantage. You could paint something like this on here and then scratch away to make a design if you really wanted to. Other things that you can use include India ink or Sumi ink, calligraphy ink, pastels. You just want to plan ahead for what you're actually making those film positives with. For example, if you notice carefully here, this was using uh, either calligraphy ink, Sumi ink, something like that, a very wet media. And when it dried, it caused the paper to buckle a little bit. It gets a little wrinkly. So if you're doing something like this, you want to make sure that your registration is not uh, very tight, that you have a little room to play around with things. Things that work a little less would be things like very weak applications of ink or paint or marker or anything like that, or pencil, anything that goes on kind of light. A good way to test that is to hold it up to the light, and if you can still see your finger or a pencil or anything like that coming through the backside, that means that light is probably going to get through as well. Now, here's a design that I made once upon a time. 2017, if you must know. And I wanted to show you an example of how I create film positives. I sometimes work with the computer and I sometimes enjoy working just making these sort of tracing paper transparencies. So initially I started out with a design that fit the sheet of paper that I wanted to go with. In this case, I had just sort of a rough idea in pencil to give me a guideline. My next idea, or my next step, was to create an initial layer that I was going to use white for. And obviously I wanted the horns to be the most detailed area of that white as well as some of the mouth area and the teeth, of course. So I put the most ink onto those areas. I then, as I was creating this, decided to get a little bit sassy and make a little bit more of a uh, textured element going on. And so I was just dry stippling ink onto this material. My final step was to create a transparency for what I kind of refer to as the key layer, the thing that ties everything together. And you'll notice that around the edges of this design, I was doing that same sort of hazy, filmy sort of uh, stippling, and it gives it sort of a grayscale. Now that's crucial to know that grayscale will not really work. If you look at the final print, side by side with the uh, original drawing here, you're going to notice that a lot of that haze that I put around that edge didn't really come through. It wasn't consistent enough to come through. So remember that as you're designing your images, if you're going to uh, try to get a grayscale effect, you're probably going to want to just print gray ink over the top and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're stippling a lot heavier than that. Well, I hope this has helped you uh, understand the terms and how these film positives are created. We have a couple of more videos that I'm going to put together for you, but that will stop this one because we're already up to about uh, almost nine minutes now. Thank you.